Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we love milking content for everything it's worth. I'm your host, E, and today we're rereading again. This is a discussion video, so I fully expect you guys to have your own list down there in the doobly-doo. What we're talking about today are my favorite Stephen King short stories to reread. Uh, I mentioned possibly doing this in the last video I did on my favorite King novels to reread and there were several comments so I'm a man of my word you guys asked for it here you go for the most part the rest of this video unless I have some technical difficulties or something will be unedited so for those of you who like sitting down and just watching me ramble I'm literally gonna go through every single one of his short story collections so it's probably going to be a long video and tell you the short stories that I enjoy rereading the most First and foremost, Night Shift. So we're going to jump into here. I'm going to look at the list of stories, and I'm going to talk about the stories I love and why I love rereading them. First one jumps right out at me is Graveyard Shift. It is just a fun, cool story about giant rat monsters. Uh, and, I mean, come on. If, if you don't like creature features, of course you're not going to like this one. But I had a lot of fun, and I especially like... The, uh, the film adaptation, uh, it's one of my favorite film adaptations of one of King's short stories. It's just a blast to, to go through. Uh, the next one is definitely The Mangler. I like reading The Mangler, especially because it pops up in some of the weirdest books. Um, most recently, I believe it popped up in... Man, I, I, off the top of my head, I want to say it was the Institute, but probably not. I know it was uh, someone talking about how their mother, um, and I don't think it's the Institute anymore, but how their mother used to work the Mangler. Um, but anyways, all that stuff's in the uh, Stephen King Redux series if you want to go back and watch those videos. Uh, the next one, Gray Matter. Uh, the reason for this one is because it ties you know a lot of my theories together about the grays and how Pennywise is uh, I consider Pennywise a gray uh, he crash landed now there is something that we need to talk about as far as did Pennywise arrive on the ship that crash landed in Haven and just made his way over to Derry or were it was it two separate occasions where Pennywise landed and then the Tommyknockers landed and then the Dreamcatcher and, and then the Greys from Dreamcatcher landed. But that's why I love uh, Grey Matter. Also it's just a really cool story. I always feel horrible for that little boy because my dad was pretty much the same way. Uh, he just kind of ignored me and drank all the time. So I, I have a little bit of, not nostalgia, but I, I have a little bit in uh, in common with the character. The next one is Battleground. Uh, I love this. Just the kid in me absolutely loves this. Uh, even though it is a it is a pretty violent story, it, it's like, a, you know, reminds me of growing up playing with my tanks and my Tonka trunks, trucks, not trunks, uh, my Tonka trucks, all that stuff. I even had a, uh, a metal uh, fire engine that I absolutely was my prized possession for the longest time. And of course, back then, all those things were metal. The Tonka truck, Tonka trucks, well, that's a tongue twister. Anyways, the Tonka trucks um, and my He-Man, uh, He-Man action figures, all that stuff. It just brings back memories of having epic battles uh, with, with those with those toys. Uh, next up, we have let's see here. Uh, Quitters Inc. is one that I have reread over and over and over again, and I'm not sure what keeps bringing me back. I think it's just a very cool story. Also, there's going to be the vast majority of these are going to be from this book. Uh, there's only like two or three out of the other books that that I reread, but I I'm always coming back to Night Shift. Uh, the, the Children of the Corn, and yes, I love the Linda, Linda Hamilton adaptation. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, it started an entire series of absolutely garbage movies, but I love it all the same. I have not seen the remake, but I'm planning on reviewing all of Stephen King's adaptations, so we're going to get to it eventually. Uh, the Last Rung on the Ladder is an absolute classic. Uh, the twist ending is fantastic. Uh, I read this one no joke probably as much as every three months uh sometimes i will read it every month for a while just because i love the way king 
put that twist together and how good it was and how, how much of a shocker it is at the end. Um, a one for the road. I love that one because it ties into Salem's Lot, and I get a little bit geeky with things like that. I mean, I'm the Stephen King theorist, so of course anything that ties in, you know, to the the wider uh, his wider catalog, I'm going to enjoy. You will notice that Night Surf isn't on this one. Um, I. I don't care too much for that story. That and Jerusalem's Lot are probably my least favorite stories in here. Um, da, 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 let's see here. Trucks is good. Uh, sometimes they come back. I actually prefer the adaptation to the story. That's just my point of view there. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for this one. Even though the man who loved flowers uh, holds a holds a special place in my heart. Next up, we have. Skeleton Crew. We're going to go through this one. I believe there's only three stories in here. Uh, I can mention them off the top of my head. If you've watched any of my other content, I have mentioned at the my favorite short story of all time is The Jaunt. My favorite story from Stephen King of all time is The Jaunt. It's probably number three on my favorite short stories of all time. Uh, before that, it would be In the Hills, The City by Clive Barker at number one and Under the Black Water by Mariana Enriquez. Uh, but here, of course, we have the jaunt, uh, absolutely fantastic, amazing, original idea that has inspired so much in pop culture from ad, uh, from Event, I almost said Advent Horizon, uh, from Event Horizon to many other pieces of, uh, of cinema and literature. It's just, it's the unknown that really does it, and it's not a story that holds the reader's hands. Uh, it completely lets you formulate your own conclusion on your own, and I, I haven't read many short stories that, other than the two that I mentioned, that are better than that one. Um, next up would be the monkey. Uh, you will find out in the next one. I have a choice in Nightmares and Dreamscapes that. Uh, that I love for the same reason that I love the monkey. I love it when Stephen King takes a common household thing or a, a common toy or uh, some object that either of us, all of us have experience with. Who we've had it, we've had one ourselves, or we know it from pop culture. We we understand, you know, that it's, it's very iconic imagery. Um, a monkey with symbols, you know, clanging them together. And the way it ends, man, it goes full cosmic horror by the end of it. And I think it's just, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, this one, I have to go through, oh, sur Survivor Type. I, you cannot talk about Skeleton Crew without talking about Survivor Type. And I know there are going to be people going, there's so many other good stories in this collection, and there are, but I'm talking about the ones that I reread the most. And Survivor Type, um, I Oddly enough, I did not care for the Creep Show television series adaptation of it because I wanted an actual adapt. Sorry, I'm I'm not saying that animation isn't an adaptation. That's not what I'm saying. But I wanted a real life Survivor type. I would love an entire movie like Castaway, maybe an hour and a half of of this concept. Just this one dude slowly spoilers, spoilers in three, two, one. I would love an entire movie of this guy just having to consume himself and maybe some kind of twist ending. Maybe he doesn't die. You know, we, we don't find out what happens to him. We can assume that he's dead, of course, but I would love to see the, the uh, this sounds so creepy, but I would love to see the aftermath of that, the, uh, the emotional and physical trauma that came with that. So if I were to write an adaptation of it, I would definitely have something like we get in Castaway where you see what happens afterward when he gets back to the mainland so on and so forth and yes again many it's upside down many fantastic stories in here but uh yeah i, I really only reread those three next up we have nightmares and dreamscapes this is my favorite cover of all of his collections. I absolutely adore it. Um, the the scarecrow is iconic for me. Anytime I, th even when I th just randomly think about Stephen King, this cover comes to mind. Uh, this one and Needful Things. Uh, yes, I do. My favorite covers are the uh, mashup of Desperation and Regulators when you put them together. But this cover is amazing. Um, and it's easily top five for me, Stephen King stuff. All right, first off, uh, Dolan's Cadillac. Uh, I, I've reread the story numerous times. It is, it's one of those stories that while 
it goes to such extremes and it's very very unbelievable we're going to talk about letting fiction be fiction next week um but it goes to some extremes completely unbelievable scenario all the things kind of fall into place just perfectly in the story some things go wrong but not much and i think it's a very cool idea uh and i really enjoy reading it especially all of the main characters inner thoughts uh next one i don't even have to look over here but the next one is popsy while i am not a fan of vampires in general i do like stephen king's short stories revolving around vampires the night flyer and popsy and popsy is a really cool really cool idea and i especially love that it's a predator that gets attacked by a predator i i love that i love stories like that and it, especially i can always hear the thunk when popsy lands on the roof of the van absolutely brilliant story uh, what at easily one of my favorite vampire stories of all time and this is coming from someone who doesn't like vampires next up we have chattery teeth again you, you know, like I said, about the monkey and skeleton crew, I love it when Stephen King takes an everyday object or maybe a joke object or a novelty object that we don't take seriously and turns it into a horror story. Um, I, I've heard a lot about people not liking this story, and it kind of blows my mind uh, because I, I think it's brilliant to take something that we don't normally see and make an irrational fear out of it. I, I, I love it when King does that, and I think he's one of the best authors to use that, uh, not trope, but to use that delivery device when you come along something that should be innocent, and it 100% is not, and it completely ruins your day. I love that. I'm just going to skim real quick. The Night Flyer, of course, I almost forgot to mention that. For some odd reason, I always think that's in Skeleton Crew, so I should have mentioned it before. But anyways, it slipped my mind. Uh, Night Flyer, Richard D's Inside View. I mean, we've been, we've been reading Stephen King all these years, and Inside View pops up a lot. I corrected myself this time, Patrick. I didn't say vast majority. Are you happy? <laughs> just kidding with you, man. Uh, let's see here. The Moving Finger. Moving Finger is a, an amazing story for the same reason why I think Chattery Teeth and the Monkey are an amazing story. It's creepy, it's weird, and I absolutely adore uh, King's weird side. Uh, Rainy Season doesn't go anywhere I ever expected. I, I like rereading that one. To learn from the buildup. To, to you know you get to know these characters and then he hits you with once again the weirdest wildest stuff you can think of um let's see here this also has i don't like stephen king baseball stories but there's i believe there's two of them in this one uh and that's everything from here i i have read crouch and um more than once or twice but i do find myself liking it less every time i read it so i've st I, that, that that one has fallen off the list but i do enjoy that story quite a bit next up we have my least favorite collection from stephen king and that is everything's eventual let me try and get a better shot of the cover here um i don't like this collection at all even though it has a dark a direct connect dark tower story called little sisters of Illyria. And I'm putting it on this list because I've read it so many times, not because I enjoy it, but because I'm always hunting for deeper connections to the Dark Tower and the Stephen King universe in general. Um, I, I appreciate the story for what it is, but I want to let you know up front that I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, but I do reread it often, especially every time I read the Dark Tower series. But get this. I don't read it first, even though it's technically a prologue, prequel, whatever, to The Gunslinger. I do not read it first. I always read it after reading the the seventh and final book. Well, there's eight, because I always read A Wind Through the Keyhole right where it's supposed to be, between Wizard and Glass and Wolves of the Kala. But I read this at the end because it helps the whole idea of Ka is a wheel and the wheel keeps turning. If you finish it, jump into that and then jump right back into the Gunslinger. I think it works better at the end of the series. I feel like it works far better than if you put it at the beginning. Uh, Autopsy Room 4, uh, very cool. I like the adaptation of this one, but it's also just a, an old Twilight Zone kind of idea that's been used 
a lot in in fiction so i have read that one more than once um i would probably give it 3.5 four stars again nothing in this book really grabs my attention and keeps me locked in for long and the last one would be 1408 um once again i do like the adaptation more than i like the short story john cusack and samuel jackson you can't really go wrong with that couple with that pair he says as he literally just now remembers cell but we don't talk about it anymore no now we're getting on to a very controversial uh short story collection i hear all the time people absolutely hate this collection this one is my second favorite stephen king collection after night shift and that is you guessed it just after sunset why do i like these stories so much because i prefer literary king to horror king nine times out of ten uh when i do love his more horror forward stories i love them because of the characters not because of the horror um i've long said that stephen king is a better author than he is a horror author and while he has made iconic monsters and all that stuff and i agree with those things and he has written s numerous dozens of scary scenes i think the real reason to read stephen king is is for the the characters and and not so much the plot but the themes that he really dives into um harvey's dream i love it it is short succinct to the point and for me it is unbelievably creepy the longer the story goes on the more i am creeped out uh next up is stationary bike just because i've been on a lot my chunky butt has been on a lot of stationary bikes and once again we're we're doing something with a common everyday item that you might not suspect i first read this in tales from the borderland uh, volume six i believe it was um and i've loved it ever since uh n is another great one it's not one that i've read a whole hell of a lot of times in fact i prefer the graphic novel version of it but it is still a terrific terrific story a very tight place another one that i love reading because of foul language in three two one the motherfucker there's a character in the book called the motherfucker and the story not the book the the story is uh literally about a man being trapped inside an overturned porta potty and i love what king has to say about the idea of the gross out uh in in stories and books and literature um he says if i can scare you i will try and scare you if i can make you laugh i will try and make you laugh but i have no problem with the gross out if i can gross you out i win that kind of thing and i absolutely adore that idea the gingerbread girl and i know i'm kind of going out of order but i'm kind of listing them in my like my favorite uh, a lot of people don't like this story uh in fact when i was i was on twitter talking to someone about me enjoying the uh first gwendy's book first gwendy book uh and that person came back and said do you like the gingerbread girl and i said yeah i dig it quite a bit and they're like okay your opinion is now invalid what anyways but i enjoy it for what it is it is a very cool very taut thriller and i enjoy rereading it um let's see here the cat from hell i prefer the the creep show because this is an old old story i prefer the creep show I, I don't know which came first if it was you know the chicken or the egg scenario here I'm not sure if the story came first or if uh, or if the adaptation came first and then he wrote the story but I'm pretty sure the story came first it just took forever for him to finally publish it um, yeah and uh, that's that's all of it from from that one uh, I do like I said this is my second favorite one but those are the stories that I come back to over and over and over again especially the more I think about it the more I should have put uh, a very tight place high up because I read that story a lot almost as much as I read the stories from Night Shift. Next up we have the final short story collection that King has released we are due for another one very very soon and i believe it's going to tie up a lot of stuff like willie the weirdo um finn which was a scribd original uh elevation will probably be in there a couple other ones uh but he has a lot of stuff floating around that hasn't been collected yet so i fully expect another collection we usually get one every decade of his career so i'm, I'm looking at that it actually it's more like every seven um but yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to another collection because i love his short stories uh so we got the bazaar of bad dreams i love this cover absolutely adore this cover 
it is kind of false advertising though because once again just like just after sunset this is not a horror story collection it does have some scary stuff like bad little kid my lady one and that kind of thing but the best stories in here for me are the literary ones batman and robin uh, have an alt have an altercation i love that story uh i'm a big fan of when king just discusses a, re a very small relationship and the father and son relationship in that one i i really enjoy it. i just like the story overall uh bad little kid i do enjoy um i there's some really creepy imagery in there uh and i've that, that's probably the one that i've reread reread the least is bad little kid um let's see here uh a death I love A Death. I remember reading it for the first time in, I believe, The New Yorker. I literally subscribed, whichever publication it was, I literally subscribed to it just so I could get a copy of it. Um, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, and King doesn't do westerns all that often, unless you want to consider The Gunslinger a western. But this was more of a strict western, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, da -da 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 under the weather is creepy i enjoy reading that one uh there's one more oh yeah we have a whole other uh, page back here the little green god of agony uh and that one is just such a i don't know it, it's just a story that i hadn't read from king uh and i it's it kind of bolsters my uh, appreciation for him that even at this point in his life he is well into his 70s he's written for what five decades at this point in time from since the 70s it's it's amazing how he's still doing something new he's still trying new things he's still willing to take risks and I just absolutely love that about him. As you guys know, I'm a huge Stephen King fanboy. I could talk about him all day. But these are my favorite short stories to reread. Uh, I don't think I've missed anything. But this is a discussion video. So I want to see you guys down there in the comments talking about what your favorite Stephen King short stories are to reread. Not your favorite short stories. But you're, we're going to get to that topic very soon. Um, a request from a friend of mine. They want me to do a tier list of all of his short stories, and I plan on doing that. It's going to take some months to get the list going, but I want to see your list and the favorite stories that you keep coming back to for Stephen King. But until next time, I'll hail the chair.